Hello guys, welcome back to the FE exam review series where we cover the most common FE problems that you guys need to know for your FE exam. In today's video, we'll be covering another heat transfer problem, specifically under part B, convection. So let's dive in. Oh yeah, now let's go over the problem. So an engineer is tasked with evaluating the heat dissipation from a metallic plate that is used to regulate the temperature of sensitive electronics. Now the plate is effectively a flat rectangular surface with a length of 0.4 meters and a width of 0.25 meters. The plate is placed in an indoor setting where it is cooled by air flowing across its surface. Now the velocity of the air flow is 3 meters per second. The surface temperature of the plate is maintained at 90 degrees Celsius, while the room temperature is at 20 degrees Celsius. Now we are giving the density, the dynamic viscosity, thermal conductivity, and the specific heat capacity of the air, and we want to determine the rate of heat transfer of the entire plate. So to solve for this problem, the first thing you guys need to do is try to determine what type of heat transfer do we have, okay? So is a heat transfer through conduction, through convection, or radiation, okay? Once you determine that, then you can go to the reference manual and grab the equation so that you can solve for the rate of heat transfer. Now, the only thing is that once you determine or you grab the equation from the reference handbook, there's going to be one variable um, that you don't have. It's not giving to you here, and you're going to need more equations to, to be able to determine that one variable, okay? So I don't want to give you guys too much hints because this problem is um, pretty straightforward, and I really want you guys to attempt it. So what I want you guys to do is go ahead and pause this video and then go and try this problem Go take a look at the equations on the reference handbook. This is very important step. So when you guys are studying for the FE, it's very important that you solve these problems on your own. And then also you spend a little bit more time on the reference handbook, getting familiar with the equations that are provided to you guys there. Now, once you solve this problem, then you can come back and check your solution. And also make sure that you guys watch the whole video because as we're solving the problem, I'm probably going to go over some important concepts that's going to help you guys uh, have a deeper understanding of this problem, okay? So go ahead and pause this video and I will see you guys in a bit. Now, if you guys find this problem helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps the channel out immensely. And also, if you are enjoying these videos and you like my teaching style and you are looking for more FE problems, make sure that you guys check out our course. We cover so many FE problems and also we go over a lot of concepts that's going to help you guys pass your FE exam. Now, if you are looking for FE other disciplines course, so we're going to launch FE other disciplines course as well so make sure that you guys sign up here for any future updates now let's go ahead and solve this problem so as we mentioned before guys the first thing we need to do is determine what type of heat transfer do we have right so looking at the problem so we were giving a plate right and we have air is flowing across its surface okay so that means that we have a heat transfer through convection so convection is the process of heat transfer between a solid surface, which in this case would be the plate, the flat plate, and a fluid, right, due to the fluid's motion. And in here, the fluid would be air, okay? So now that we know that we have heat transfer through convection, now we can go to the reference manual and grab the equation. Now, if you guys go to the heat transfer section, here you are giving problems for conduction, convection, and radiation. Now, we've already covered a couple problems on conduction. So if you guys are interested in checking those problems, uh, you can find them here. Now, as we mentioned, we do have heat transfer through convection. So we're going to use this equation here. Okay, so let's take a look at this equation for a minute. So we have Tw, so that's the wall surface temperature, which was given to us. T infinity, that's the bulk fluid temperature, which was also given to us. A, that's going to be the area, so we were giving the width and the length, so we can easily determine the area. And then we have H, which is the convection heat transfer coefficient of the fluid. The problem is we don't have H, so H was not given to us. So we're going to need to find another equation that's going to help us determine H. 
Now the equation for H is provided to you guys under convection section, okay? So here in this first page, it's like introducing you guys to these terms and just providing the general equations, okay? And then after this, you're gonna have more equations for conduction, convection, and then radiation, okay? So the first section is going to be conduction, and if you scroll more, you're gonna hit convection, and then after that, there's gonna be radiation, okay? So it's very important that you guys spend a little bit more time on the reference handbook and get yourself familiar with these equations, okay? So now, let's take a look at what we have here for convection. So we have two types of flow. So we have external and internal flow, okay? Now, if we look back, so uh, the problem that we have, so we have an external flow because we were giving a plate and there is air is flowing across its surface, right? So it's an external flow. And we also have a flat plate. So we're going to use these equations here to determine H. Now, the question is, guys, which of these equations we're going to have to use, right? Um, so here we have two Nussel's number equations. So this equation here is for when we have a laminar flow and this equation is for when we have turbulence flow which means first we need to determine Wernland's number right just like we did in fluid mechanics to be able to determine what type of flow we have and then once we do that then you, we can come back to the reference handbook and grab the right equation okay so let's go ahead and do that now let's go ahead and solve for Reynolds number guys so first we have the density which was giving as 1.0 759 and let's go ahead and write the unit so this is going to be kilograms per cubic meters okay i always like to write the units just to make sure that everything cancels at the end okay now we're going to multiply it by u so that's going to be the velocity of the air which is three meters per second and then multiply it by l which is the length of the plate which was giving as you open four meters and we're going to divide this whole term here by the dynamic viscosity, which is 1.9835 times 10 to the power of minus 5. And this is kilograms per meters second. Now, let's go ahead and go over the units. Now, do you guys remember what should be the units for Reynolds number? It's dimensionless, right? So we got to make sure that all the units cancel. So let's go ahead and check that. So kilograms here cancels with this kilograms. Then we're going to have here meters squared because we have meters times meters. So that's meters squared, which is going to cancel with this cubic meters and we're going to be left with one meter. And so then what we have here is per meters second, which is the same as this here per meter second. So that's also cancels. Okay. So we are going to have dimensionless. Okay. Now, if you guys plug these numbers in your calculator, you're going to get 6.51 times 10 to the power of 4, okay? Now, this here is less than 10 to the power of 5, which means we have liminar flow, okay? Now, let's go back to the reference handbook and then grab the right equation so that we can solve for H. So this is the equation that we're going to use, guys, to solve for H, okay? Now, we do need to solve for parental number before we can actually solve for H. And parental number equation is given to you guys here. Okay, so this is the equation. So let's go ahead and do that. Now let's go ahead and solve for Prenault's number. So we have CP here. So that's the specific heat capacity, which was given as 1007. And then this has the units of joules per kilogram Kelvin. Okay, so let's go ahead and write that down. And then we're going to multiply it by mu. So that's going to be, again, the dynamic viscosity, which is 1.9835 times 10 to the power of minus 5. And this is kilograms per meters second. And then we're going to divide it by K, which is the thermal conductivity, which is 0 0.02816. And this is watts per meter Kelvin. Okay, so, so far, guys, this problem has been just really about like finding the right equation and just plugging the numbers. So it is a lot of steps. So if you worry that you might forget these steps, what you can do is make sure that you write these steps um, down and then just add them to your cheat sheets. Okay, so make sure that you guys 
always um, add the important equations and concepts that you are learning and then add those to your cheat sheets and make sure that you review that cheat sheet before your exam. It's very important to do that. And then also we do have a cheat sheet that has a lot of important equations and concepts. So if you guys want to get that cheat sheet, you can download it here. And for whatever reason, you guys don't get it to your email, make sure that you guys email us and we'll be happy to send it to you. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the units. So Prentel's number is the same as Renan's number. So it's dimensionless. So all the units here needs to cancel. Okay. So first, Let's go ahead and rewrite this watts in terms of joules. So that way we can make sure that joules cancel. So watts is the same thing as joules per second, right? So then now the joules is going to cancel. Here we have kilograms is going to cancel with this kilogram. This Kelvin cancels with this Kelvin. And then here we're going to be left with per meter square second. And then here we also have per meter second, right? Because of the watts. And so this is going to cancel with this okay now if you guys plug these numbers in your calculator you are going to get about 0 0.7093 now let's go ahead and use this equation guys so we can calculate for h so what i did here is i just rearranged the equation so that we have just h right so we're going to take this term here we're going to multiply it by k and then we're going to divide it by l okay so now let's go ahead and plug in the numbers so we're going to have 0 0.664. We're going to multiply it by Ronald's number, which is 6.51 times 10 to the power of 4. And then we're going to multiply it, or we're going to raise it to the power of half. Okay. And then we're going to multiply it by Prentel's number, which we said is 0 0.7093. And then we're going to raise this to the power of 1 over 3. And then we're going to multiply by K, which is the thermal conductivity, which was giving as 0 0.02816. Okay. And this has the units of watts per meter Kelvin. Okay. And then we're going to divide this whole thing by L, which is the length, which was giving as 0 0.4 meters. Okay. Now, if you guys plug these numbers in your calculator, you're going to get about 10.64. And this is going to have the units of watts per meter squared Kelvin. Okay. And the reason that is, it's because here, guys, we have watts per meter Kelvin. And then here we have another meter. So that's a per meter times per meter, which is meter squared and then Kelvin. Okay. And so that's the unit for H. Okay. Now what we can do is go back to this equation here to finally solve for the rate of heat transfer. Okay. So let's go ahead and plug the numbers. So H here is going to be 10.64. And this is going to have the units of watts per meter squared Kelvin. Okay. And then we're going to multiply it by the area, which is 0 0.4 meters times the width, which is 0 0.25 meters. Okay. And then multiply it by TW. So that's going to be the um, temperature, the surface temperature of the plate, which is 90 degrees Celsius minus uh, T infinity, which is 20 degrees Celsius. Okay. And now if you guys plug these numbers in your calculator, you're going to get about 74 0.5 and this is going to have the units of watts okay let's go over this a little bit uh, so here we have meters squared because the area right meters times meters so that's meters squared so that's going to cancel with this meter squared here okay and then here we have kelvin and notes guys here that i didn't really convert these temperatures it's because we have a temperature difference, right? So the temperature difference of Kelvin is going to be the same as temperature difference in Celsius. So we don't really need to convert these, okay? So technically it's the same. So the Kelvin kind of cancels with this Kelvin and then we're left with watts, which is the unit that we want, okay? So now if we take a look at the multiple choice, the answer is going to be C. Now, if you guys enjoyed this video and also looking for more FE problems that's going to help you with your FE preparation, make sure that you guys check out our course where we cover many problems. We also go over a lot of concepts and it's really going to help you guys pass your FE exam. And it is also lifetime access. So make sure that you guys check it out. And also before you go, make sure to check out this playlist here where students share their journey 
on how they pass the FE exam. Now, thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a great productive week and I will see you guys on the next video. À la prochaine. Oh yeah,